So this is when it brought me, I mean, I finally got out of university alive, thankfully, and you will too. <laughs> uh, but this is when I started learning about acceptance commitment therapy, also known as ACT. So maybe some of you have heard about CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy. So acceptance commitment therapy, similar. Uh, cognitive behavioral therapy will often tell you to evaluate and assess your thoughts and your behavior and challenge those. Acceptance commitment therapy works a little bit different. While this conversation is not about acceptance commitment therapy, I could go on, I won't. <laughs> what I really wanna focus on is the suffering loop, okay? So if I go over here, oh, also if you're interested in ACT, The Happiness Trap, great book. ACT Made Simple, it's a textbook about ACT. This is more for practical use, um, but The Happiness Trap, I definitely would recommend if you're interested in acceptance and commitment therapy. Let's go back to the suffering loop, okay? So a lot of my overachieving came from those high expectations of moving mountains. How am I gonna move mountains? I mean, I might be strong, but I'm not moving mountains, right? But those high expectations really weighed heavy on me, okay? So there was a lot of self-invalidation for maybe things that I was going through. So say for instance, when I went to university, experiencing that learning curve, instead of really, you know, validating saying, oh, this is a normal thing. Uh, I kept saying, no, there's something wrong with me. Everybody else is doing fine. Everybody can sustain themselves and look at me. So I started really feeling ashamed of myself. And then that would bring on guilt from my inactions or actions that were taking me away from those achievements, okay? So I felt a lot of those negative emotions following that self-invalidation. I got caught up in those shame shields and guilt cycles. And those negative emotions definitely followed suit, okay? So that anxiousness came up. I started isolating myself. I thought, okay, if I'm gonna be productive, I must not go to that Halloween party or I must not go to that housewarming because I have a test and I need to do well and I need to succeed. The joke of it all, my grades didn't change. <laughs> Whether or not I went to that social event or not, it didn't matter. In fact, I probably would have done better had I done more social activities outside of, you know, member associations and coursework because that's a way to actually, you know, get some energy and recharge different parts of your life coming together, right? So instead of connecting with people, what I did was look for an escape route. So specifically perfectionism, okay? We're going to get into this a little bit later. But through those negative emotions, when you're trying to escape those negative emotions, you get into this place of suffering. Okay, I know that's a pretty intense word, but it feels like that. <laughs> how many times have you asked your friends, like, how are you doing? And it's just like exam season. And you're like looking at each other. And it's like, you know what? Let's not ask each other this right now, right? So you're getting into that place of suffering. And that suffering creates higher expectations. And you're focusing on that discrepancy again, right? So if we go and we look a little bit more into that escapism, okay, that perfectionism, and you might be even asking, how is perfectionism escaping from these negative emotions and the self-invalidation and these high expectations? Well, you're lucky I'm here because I'm here to tell you, okay? So perfectionism, if we're looking at it, so I have a definition over here. This says people who strain compulsively towards impossible goals and who measure their worth entirely in terms of productivity, and accomplishments, okay? This is huge. If you look at these traits of perfectionism, this little photo I found on Google, sorry, absolutely nothing is sourced, I'm so sorry. Um, this is me trying not to be a perfectionism, a perfectionism, perfectionist, see, look at that. Um, sorry, nothing is sourced. My source, trust me, okay? <laughs> um, traits of perfectionism. So you have that fear of failure, right? and you're, that, you're in that procrastination cycle, you're really focusing on those results, but those results, where, where do you wanna end up? Well, these standards are absolutely unrealistic, right? And when you make a mistake or, or you do fail, 
you become highly critical of yourself and you hear that inner critic chatting and chatting and chatting. So it gets a little bit intense, okay? There's also different types of perfectionism or a different type of perfectionist, I should say. So we have that healthy perfectionist who looks at you know, themselves and wants to challenge. They do set those high goals and standards, but whenever they fail, they look at failure as an opportunity to grow, okay? This is so import important, okay? Because when you're learning from failure, you're actually staying engaged in moving forward, and it's a growth mindset at that point, okay? Versus, if you look on the other side, maladaptive perfectionists, okay, they're still setting these extremely high goals, but they are unrealistic, okay? They're not high goals and standards, they're high and unrealistic goals, okay? And when they fail, they are becoming obsessed with the goal and increasing their effort and putting more force in. But this could also be taken where you avoid the activity altogether, meaning, say for instance, you did bad, on your first midterm, you want to drop the class, right? You need to do things 100% perfect. I remember when I first started sending emails with a Concordia email address, okay? It would take me sometimes two hours <laughs> just to write a small body paragraph with a signature because I wanted it to sound right. I wanted to make sure my grammar was correct just to get a reply that said, K okay, sent from my iPhone right? So certain things, you know, we don't need to fight every single battle. And perfectionists, I'm telling you, you don't need to fight every single battle, okay?